saw in the other room, we were bending the sides, and we saw the gentleman cutting the sides out to put his neck block and tail block in. And then we are going to line it with perfect, which is this material that we've, it's Spanish cedar. We buy two inch planks and mill it down and slot it to make our curving. And this gives us a surface we're going to top and back onto. While this gentleman's doing that, we've got racing going on. I was, I was just saying, you brace pretty much all the guitars. Everything has the same pattern. We, of course, we'll do different thicknesses for small bodies and large bodies and stuff. And most of our tuning is done actually with the thicknessing the top, not so much as carving individual braces on every guitar because it's kind of a um, once you get off the road map kind of thing, you know. So we don't really do much individually carving of braces. We mostly do everything with thicknessing the top, depending on the stiffness, the, the weight, the flex, the tap. Uh, what it's going on, what kind of wood it's being matched up with. And most of our most of our tuning per instrument is done with every one of these tops is a different thickness. They all vary five, ten thousands. And then we'll actually feather the edges a bit with a little orbital sander, and, and all that all that thickness varies too around the edges. So it's we just we're fortunate that we're a small enough company we can take the time to make every top the best it can be for the particular guitar it's going on. So bracing and then carving. And we're spinning it back to the, the ends of the braces. We'll tuck into the into the curving. So we've notched out the curving. You can see notches here for the, the top braces and the curving where the, the ends of the top braces will notch in. That's a carved top. This will be a cutaway, which of course is not cut off yet, you can see. Also, our tongue brace is shortened. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When it's all put and it's all ready to go, you'll see the clamps against the wall. You can put the top and the back on. We'll make a body. We'll route out a binding ledge. We'll do the binding on. The next day, we'll pull the tape, scrape the excess binding, sand it, and we'll go into the finish department. Spend a few days there and get finished on it, then we'll come back out here. The body's got finished, it'll come out, we'll wrap a mortise in it. Our next have a it's a it's a mortise and tenon joint, there's not a dovetail, it's not a butt joint. We've got a three-quarter inch deep mortise and tenon with anchor bolts. Inside this tenon in the heel, there's a half inch birch dowel counter sunk into this tenon. So these anchor bolts are going into that birch dowel, not just the end grain of the mahogany. Why what is what is the reason behind that? Birch is a is a very dense and it just it it's just for stability and structure. It's much stronger than just going into the end grain of the mahogany. And the mortise and, and the mortise and tenon kind of gives us better transfer into the actual body of the guitar. So it's got a nice joint. There will be no glue in this joint. There'll just be glue under the fretboard tongue. So if you have to remove a neck or do any neck set, it's a process of just it would be easy. Of pulling the bolts out. I don't know if you can see inside there. My fingers may be in the way. We'll pull the bolts out, heat up the end, of, heat up the tongue of the fretboard, into the fretboard, and the neck will be easier to work on. Which is something that anybody's ever had to have the neck reset on the guitar. Yeah, we didn't see any reason to keep every repairman busy for the rest of his life doing neck resets, you know. So <laughs> we try to make the job easier.